service. Wow, that was amazing. So the second I cleared customs, they were there waiting for me to get my bags, walked outside. The second that I hit the curb, the Rolls Royce Phantom picked up. And then I was just kind of giving my video when I got into the Phantom. And then I got out and there was a lady waiting for me right at the lobby. I did not even enter the hotel yet. There's a lady there. She says, uh, yeah, we're doing an in-room check-in. I was like, okay, that's great. Walked me up to the 45th, which is where the main lobby is, the 45th floor. And then there we proceeded to go right up to my room here at the 50th. Went through everything right here. She scanned my passport, took my credit card. I haven't had a chance to even properly say hello to you guys. I mean, I was talking to you in the, in the Phantom and I'm not even sure that video is gonna make it because by the time I was able just to say something, I was whisked up here. But look at this room, unbelievable. I don't know if this is a standard room, but these views, we're in Tokyo Midtown, by the way, we're here for three nights, then we're off to three other hotels. Look at these views. My goodness, what a gorgeous city this is. Let's go over this room real quick. Uh, let's start in the bedroom. Let's start in the bedroom. And you know I like my perches. And this could happen. I could just sit up here all night and just watch this city. Oh, it's so cool. 50th floor, Ritz Carlton, do yourself a favor. TV right here, bed right here, bench by the bed. I think that's always a sign of utmost class when you have a bench bed. Uh, what do we have here? What do we have here? Master, okay, got that. Footlight, nightlight, makeup room, do not disturb, reading light. And then, oh, these drapes close by themselves. We'll have to figure this out. All right, so that is cool. God, that's awesome. Um, let's see what else we have over here. Footlight. Reading light, there we go. Now we have all the lights on in the room and this is what it looks like. This is Tokyo in the evening and it's cool. I actually like the lights off and I probably will keep them off so I don't get any reflection off this glass, but take a look at these views. Wow, okay, let's continue to keep it going. Um, oh, let's check out this bed, shall we? Ooh, ooh. It's a softy, it's a five. It's a five and after a 12 hour flight, I'm glad it's a five because those airplane seats are quite hard. They're hard on the back. All right, let's move on. This looks to be just a huge fitting area. Closet space after closet space. Let's see what's in here. Just more closet, more closet, more closet, more closet, extra blanket up there and another robe. Okay. All right, let's check out this bathroom. Beautiful bathroom. I like the way it kind of opens up and it butterflies. You have adjacent vanity sinks, which is interesting. And we have a TV right here, and we are using Aspray products, okay? We are using Aspray. I've never heard of that brand, so I will use that and report back. We have a robe hanging. We have a tub here, more Aspray products. You have some bath salts. We open up, and we have one of the famous or infamous, depending on your mentality. We have one of the famous or infamous Japanese toilets. Has all the functions right here, start, stop, spray, soft spray. That thing has more options on it than my first car. All right, so that's the bathroom for now. We have some temperature control stuff here as we walk in. We do have a column here. Unfortunately, if this wasn't here, I think that it would add so much more dimension, even to what is already a great room. Let's just go over here. Let's take a look at, ooh. Ooh, this is a nice, nice chair to get some work done in. I could sit in this thing for a couple hours. Awesome. And then just a polished wood desk. Just the finest quality materials and then we have another ledge where you can just sit up here and just chill oh i noticed an accent wall right here by the desk some type of metallic japanese art and then we have a chair and then we have a couch and then we have a love seat you could sleep somebody on it Ugh. it's like a really really firm bed and it does not pull out into a sleeper because it's the ritz carlton that's why and then we have a love seat so this is a traditional living room. I mean, this is larger than a lot of living rooms that I've been in in my personal life. This is, this is beautiful. I like how the desk is kind of hidden over there. Um, it's kind of has its own little feng shui area. That is pretty cool. And then we have another huge closet. As if that whole closet area was not enough, we have another closet over here. And this one you can walk into. This is, I think, the size of the first bedroom I grew up in. This is, uh, this is pretty sweet. This is pretty surreal, guys. Uh, the way that I got to Tokyo today with the Delta One Suites, um, everything that went along with that, go check out that video. I've never splashed down in a city like this before, and it's, it's pretty surreal. Um, it still is registering, so 
I'm going to decompress a little bit. It's been a long flight. And again, they just whisked me up here. So I'm going to take in this room a bit more personally, uh, have a chance to relax and then take it in, unfurl, get to the gym, and then kind of just get my bearings, figure out what I'm going to do, when I'm going to do it, and where it's going to be. All right, there it is. My first Tokyo sunrise, my first real Tokyo morning. There's Mount Fuji right there. So I got a view of Mount Fuji, and then I have a view of the uh, tower, the Tokyo Tower right there, and then just look at this city. It is so pretty. I haven't even ventured out into it, and I already love it. And that just is going just based off gut, just based off intuition. So let me go through this room very quickly. I went through some stuff last night, initial impressions. Yes. Uh, there's an espresso machine and also some tea right here. Uh, with your traditional uh, Japanese tea set. These uh, macaroons have been sitting there waiting for me. That's going to be my breakfast. Uh, then I'm off to the gym and then I'm just off to walk around. That's going to be in a separate video, so go check out those videos. Notice some things in the bathroom that I want to tell you. The switches here in Tokyo, and I'm not sure if it's the Ritz-Carlton or I'm not sure if it's Tokyo because I've only been here for one night, so I can't say for certain. This is my first trip here. They're easy to miss. They're just right on the wall like that these Japanese toilets this needs to happen this is unbelievable this was worth the room alone I kind of touched on this last night you have your entire room configurator right here you want your nightlight your footlight your master your do not disturb you've got all your drapes in right here this is a corner room and I've been the corner room king lately I, I have not requested this room that just happened I got a corner room at the W of San Francisco I got the corner room of the W at the Fouché building there was another corner room sprinkled in there within some of my past videos I have had more successes in quarter rooms than failures, so I'm becoming less skeptical of them. I think the better the brand, the more affinity of that corner room to be cooler. And this is certainly a cool corner room. This room is huge. I'll just pace this real quick because I'm going to get those macaroons. Then I'm going to bring them right over here and I'm going to eat them. Let's just pace off this room real quick and see how large it is. Uh, we'll say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Two more would be twenty. This is a sixty-foot room. Here's my breakfast: uh, vanilla, strawberry, chocolate, pistachio, and lemon. I'll probably let you know which one I like best. As of now, I'm going to uh, regroup and figure out what I'm going to do for the day, and I'll check in later. 8 a.m. first morning in Tokyo. Look at this pool set up. It's beautiful. So you have some infused waters right here, cold waters right here just waiting for you. We are on the 46th floor. Chairs, lounges, they just put this together. I just saw them do it. It opens at 7, it closes at 10 p.m. And then a view of Mount Fuji right there. So 7 to 10 p.m. It is a lap pool. So this is the pool at the 46th of the Ritz Carlton, 46th floor. And one of the coolest things, not only is there seating here for someone, if you don't feel like getting in the hot tub, you can sit and accompany someone and look at the views. One of the cooler, if not coolest hot tubs I've seen in a hotel up until this point. All right, so I'm going to go down to the lobby bar. Apparently, it's one of the best bars in all of Tokyo. I'll link the article in the description below. It's really well done, and it lists a lot of bars that jive with me. And this one is right up there. I believe it's like top 10, if not top 5. So I'm going to start there. Uh, why not start at your home base? And then I'm going to jump off from there. Uh, this Manhattan is spectacular. And by the way, they're waiting for me to come down on the elevator this morning. They made this for me and then put together some recommendations just based off the brief conversation that we had in my room last night. I'm just flabbergasted about the amount of effort that they put in thus far. This is my first origami. Thank you, Mocha. So here's the entrance to the lobby bar. You can see the beautiful waterfall cascading columns, just picturesque. And you have the piano that is hovering above the water right here. Just water and water, very tranquil, very soothing, very cool. Then the dining area kind of steps up a little bit. They have some of their finest uh, liquors and wines showcased right here. Same on the opposing side. And then you get to the bar, which is grandiose, beyond belief. And then you can see more of their distinguished liquors locked up over here, an elevated stepped sitting area. And then of course, majestic views. 45 stories up, some of the best views in Tokyo from what I am told. And then if we move over to the other side here, the same. Look how beautiful this bar is. I like how they lock up the liquors and showcase them. I think that just gives an extra amount of class. 
Then we have some L couches, very chase-like, very proper, some sculpture, and then again, some of the best views in Tokyo. The Ritz Carlton Bar, one of the best in the city, and I can see why. The beautifully smoked and creamy purple number three, butter infused dark rum, purple potato paste, fresh cream, sesame paste, cinnamon. Yeah, this is a lot of treadmill action going on right here. Definitely gonna have to hit the gym after this one, but smoky, creamy, haven't tasted it yet, but uh, God, the color on it is beautiful. Potato puree, butter infused rum. All right, let's go in. One of the best drinks I've ever had, maybe ever. It wasn't so indulgent. If it was my first day here, I'd order this again and again and again. Uh, it is excellent. It is so good. I mean, it's exactly what it says. It's butter infused dark rum, purple potato paste, fresh cream, sesame paste, and cinnamon. Um, it's purplicious. It's delectable. I feel like it belongs in like the Caribbean somewhere, but here it's here it is in Tokyo, and it's extraordinary. So purple number three is gone, and I decided to continue the fun, and I went with the Wow Burger, Wagyu beef, duck foie gras, aged cheddar, and truffle sauce, thirteen thousand five hundred yen, which I believe translates into one hundred and thirty-five dollars. Yeah, I just ordered a one hundred and thirty-five dollar burger. Why not? Let's explore this together. All right, so here is the thirteen thousand five hundred yen, one hundred and thirty-five dollar Wow Burger. Wagyu aged cheddar. Just scrunch that down a little bit. Comes with fries and a side salad. And as you can see, this place is filled out a little bit. We have some uh, lady playing the piano. Pretty magnificent view of Tokyo. All right, let's get to this burger. All right, all right. Back in my room after lunch. And here's what the room looks like. They cleaned it for me. Here's what it looks like during the day all nice and fresh and clean and organized. No lights on right now, but you don't need any because of the beautiful Tokyo skyline. Gorgeous. That lunch, ooh, that lunch was a lunch of champions. That, that was an amazing lunch. Those two purple drinks were worth the trip here. Some of the best drinks I've ever had in my entire life, if not the best. I'm not letting the experience and the excitement get to me. Really, those drinks were excellent. Purple cream potato parade, aged rum so good it was right up my alley if you're in tokyo come to the 45th floor of the ritz carlton it is worth it it is definitely one of the best bars in the city now i know what that article is talking about you will not regret it come for at least the drink you have to it is palatial opulent just stunning picturesque almost indescribable okay that lunch the purple drinks were amazing i just talked on that the egg white drink was good what about that 135 dollars wagyu burger what was that like was it worth 135 dollars no it was not at least from a delicacy standpoint, it wasn't. Now, from an experiential standpoint, an experience standpoint, yes, it was. From a ceremonial um, traveling standpoint, yeah, I'm glad I ordered it. Now I could say I had that moment. I came to Tokyo. I had a $135 Wagyu burger with foie gras and aged cheddar, and yeah, I can I can have a moment with it. But was it worth it? No, it's not. So if you're deciding to order that burger or not, if you happen to make it here at the lobby bar and you're perusing the menu and you're like, should I get it, should I not, you're on the fence, the answer is no. Save your money. Was it delectable? Yes, it was. Was it worth $135? No, it was not. So after a couple of those purple people leader drinks, the purple number three and the uh, Ritz Carlton Manhattan, the egg white drink and then a Sapporo, this guy, this guy is a little sleepy. So I'm gonna hit that nicely made bed and I'm gonna check in later. Ritz Carlton Gym, Tokyo, 46th floor. This stuff is jam packed in here. It's quite an efficient use of space, but still easily walkable, great lines of sight into what you wanna do. We have some Pilates, aerobic yoga right here with some mirrors. Um, shoulder mirrors, by the way, mirror right here to mirror right here. Clean mats hanging, waiting to be used and not rolled up. Clean, hanging, new, fresh. Look at the treadmills that overlook the city on the 46th floor. This makes working out fun. Spent some time on these earlier today. Great way to take in the city and also burn out some calories. There's six of them, three and then three. An array of weight resistance machines anywhere from abs to legs to shoulders to chest. Uh, Roman chair here, two ellipticals, one traditional stair stepper, one nice back mirror. I saw some people doing some yoga and some body resistance training right here. Lighter dumbbells, heavier dumbbells, Smith machine, the universal cable cross, which I'm always on. This is great. And then last but not least, one spin bike, two regular vertical bikes, and then one 
horizontal bike and lastly a row machine and that is it this is you know, all right good morning good morning i really enjoy these electronic automated blinds what's up guys last hours my last hours here at the ritz carlton tokyo and you know what i woke up this morning and it is bittersweet because i'm coming back and i couldn't be happier this place is the coolest the first ever official coolest rating it's been the best hotel experience I've had yet hitherto this day, both on the channel and in my personal life. And uh, there's a few things that cemented that, but I will say predominantly it's based off of quality, luxury, and service. Service is the most distinguishing part. Service. The service here is unrivaled. The 50th story room, awesome. The lobby bar, one of the best in Tokyo. Literally one of the best in Tokyo with some excellent drinks, very creative and uh, very scrumptious. Uh, the fitness facility was great, luxurious. Uh, attendance on staff the entire time. The grounds are just kept as if it is someone's castle. And uh, you're treated as such. You're literally treated like a king or a queen or a prince or a princess here. This place is just unbelievable. Um, it's almost indescribable. I've never experienced service like this before. And I think I had to come over to this culture to really experience this level of service. This takes any service in Mayfair, London, England, any service at some really high end places in Miami. Uh, as I look back throughout my international stays uh, in South America, you know, there have been some hotels that have really given excellent service. This is unrivaled, it's unparalleled, it is the apex of service. You have to come here in order for you to understand it. I can't describe it, it's ineffable. In fact, I had to put on my Do Not Disturb a little bit because they are come knocking on the door to see how you're doing, whether they can refill the mini bar, change the sheets, whatever they can do. They go out of their way to service you, out of their way. I will say this is the first time I've utilized the concierge service. I can be a bit of a know-it-all sometimes, even though I'm grounded humbly. Um, I know what I know. And then I know what I don't know and I know what I like and because I have my own personal preferences sometimes I'm kind of suspect to ask people what their preferences are because preferences well there's seven billion of them on the planet and not every single one is completely alike so you know what I like may not be what you like and uh, that snowballs and daisy chains you know infinitely or at least throughout this world so I did utilize the concierge and I'm so glad I did um, last night they sent me to a restaurant called Wagyu Mafia. And I think I'm gonna do a standalone video on it. It has to, this place is notorious. Wow, Wagyu Mafia. It's members only, it's invite only, and there's only 18 seats on it. it the, whole, the entire thing is a chef table with multiple uh, award-winning Wagyu chefs. This place currently holds the record for the most expensive cut of Kobe beef ever sold. Ever. Most expensive cut ever sold. Not highest price, because you can have anything that's really, really high priced and it never sells. Most expensive cut of Kobe beef ever sold. And then subsequently, it earned the highest grade of marbling ever on a steak. They this puts Salt Bay to shame. And I know that there's a lot of Salt Bay people out there that love it. I'm sorry. It puts him to shame. This place is unreal. 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 I can't say that enough. It's unreal. Um, Ritz Carlton gave me their seat for the night. I'm very, very honored and humbled to have done that, even though I paid a hefty tag to go there. It's about a $700 dinner. I'm not bragging about it. I'm recommending it. I'm recommending it. This place was the coolest. It is also the coolest. Two coolest experiences, this Ritz Carlton and then the subsequent restaurant they sent me to, Wagyu Mafia. I was already going to rate this place the coolest. Uh, that just put a cherry on top that was a punctuation point and an exclamation mark on uh, a fantastic trip and you have to check out this hotel century located everything is walkable there's the tokyo tower right in the Rapengi district google it it's a great mix of uh different cultures you will get some westerners but you also get obviously a lot of japanese as well it's a great mix if you're not very comfortable traveling internationally and you have a difficult time getting yourself out there, putting yourself out there, this is the spot to stay. The Rapengi District is the spot for you. I promise you there's English speaking and it's a great segue into your Japanese adventure in the Rapengi area. Wherever Ritz-Carlton is, you're gonna find a pretty decent spot. And that's one of the things I'm doing with the W's in my W tour. This is another video series I'm doing, but I'm going to all the W's in the world. There's 55 of them. You find a W, you're gonna find a pretty good location. They're typically in pretty happening spots. Same thing with Ritz Carlton's. They know their demographic and they know where they need to be. This one 
did not fail. It's attached to the Galleria Mall if you want to do some shopping. It's right at Tokyo Midtown, right where the Tokyo Station is. If you hop a train to basically anywhere you want, it's so awesome. So.